Hello and welcome to the candidate forum for Minnesota Senate District 54 special election. I'm Tom Wright with Hastings Community TV and will be the moderator. This is a big team effort. We have partnered with our friends at South Washington County Telecommunications Commission and our friends at Town Square Television to bring you this forum. And we are doing so from this very nice studio at South Washington County's uh, place in Cottage Grove. Thank you for joining us, whether you're watching live on Facebook or live on one of our channels, or perhaps on replay on YouTube or one of our channels. This is an important election and we think this next half hour or so will be worth your time. The questions have already been submitted and are set. So if you are watching this live on Facebook, there is no need to submit questions. What brought us here is former State Senator Dan Schoen resigned on December 15th, leaving his seat open. As a result, Governor Dayton called for a special election to be held February 12th. The filing period is now over, the special primary is now over, so we now get to meet the candidates still standing, literally. To our left, we have Ms. Carla Bigham. Thank you for joining us, Carla. Thank you for having me. And to our right, we have Mr. Denny McNamara. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having us. Thanks for ha being here, Mr. McNamara. All right. Now, before we get to the questions, I want to quickly hit the seven rules we set for this forum so our audience is on the same page. One, this is a candidate forum, not a debate. Candidates will not be allowed to interrupt each other. The questions were not provided in advance. They will be hearing them for the first time. We will start in alphabetical order with Ms. Bigham giving her introduction first, then Mr. McNamara, and then the candidates will take turns answering first. Each candidate will have one minute to answer the question. We do have a timer to help warn them when they're out of time, and I will interrupt and move on if they go over. The candidate answering the question owns their minute. This is very important. They can use their minute however they wish to provide a rebuttal or add on to a previous answer of their own if they feel like they ran out of time, but we sure hope the answer to that question is in there somewhere. And again, no interruptions are allowed by the other candidate. Candidates will be given two minutes each at the end for their closing remarks. And our final rule, this is a big one, we ask the candidates to respect the rules and each other. And I'm sure we won't have any problem with that with you too. Get along. All right. With that done, let's get to our first question, including the who and the why. Again, for all questions, they will have one minute to provide their answer. Ms. Bigham, we'll start with you. Please introduce yourself and share your background and then tell us why you decided to run to represent District 54 in this special election. Well, thank you and thank you to the various cable commissions and stations for hosting this. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the voters to get to know us. Um, I'm Carla Bigham. I am a, the current Washington County Commissioner. I'm a former uh, Cottage Grove City Council member and state representative. I'm a lifelong resident of this district and um, I'm married uh, to my husband John and we live in Cottage Grove. I'm running because I have the state and the local experience to bring the necessary change in culture uh, up to the Capitol. And um, I have really had um, concerns as a local elected official about the state pushing their responsibilities onto property taxpayers uh, and not um, meeting the, the needs of our uh, residents, whether it's with education funding um, or other various transportation or programming um, uh, options for us. So I look forward to answering some questions today and um, uh, talking about uh, how we can bring that change up at the Capitol. Thank you. And now for you, Mr. McNamara, please introduce yourself and tell us why you are running for this special election for District 54. Well, thanks, Tom, for moderating and to South Washington County and Hastings Cable for hosting the event. It's great to be here. Uh, I spent 30 years as a landscape contractor uh, working in the district, in the industry that I'm really proud of. I spent 14 years as a state representative in the district, uh, four of which I chaired the House Environment Committee. I'm a family person. I'm married to my wife, Lynn, for 42 years. We have two growing sons. Uh, they all live in Hastings, two daughter-in-laws, five grandchildren. I'm just uh, really proud of my family and what I've done. Uh, I spent 12 years as a youth baseball coach, eight years on the Hastings Parks and Recreation Commission, and just really excited. I, I for four years, was chair of the House Environment Finance Committee, so I know what it's like to, to lead and to get things done and to work with a Democrat governor and a Democrat Senate leader to, to do things. And so I'm excited to be here today and thanks for the opportunity to have us share this time. Great. Thank you. And we'll stay with you, Mr. McNamara, for a question too. Your agenda, if elected, what would be your top priorities in your first session? 
You, you know, Tom, I want us to get along. I'm somebody that's very proud of my record of working in a bipartisan way. As I said, I chaired the House Environment Committee. I worked with Governor Dayton to get stuff done, to pass a budget, working with Senator Thomas Oney, a Democrat from the Senate. So I'm somebody that gets stuff done. I've got a couple things that didn't get done my, at the end. I, I've got an environmental issue that I would like to resolve. Uh, the illegal mowing of ditches was the Governor Dayton's number two thing at his summit, Pheasant Summit. I think I can get that done next year when I go to the Capitol. Uh, I just am really excited to be somebody that will work together. I had the strongest bipartisan record my last year, my last biennium in the minority, 78% support. Um, just a fantastic bipartisan record. Appointed to more conference committee by Speaker Thiessen than anybody in the Minnesota House. So I'm somebody with a proven track record that can get along and get things done. All right, and Ms. Bigham, please tell us about your agenda. If elected, what would be your top priorities if in your first session, if elected? Thank you, Tom. Um, my priorities are the same priorities of the district, uh, the same priorities that I have fought for as a Cottage Grove City Council member, as a state representative, and currently as a Washington County Commissioner. Those are well-funded public schools, affordable, accessible health care, uh, clean environment, multimodal transportation uh, options, thriving local economies and safe communities. Um, I believe that um, we need to change the culture up there and I'm uh, to, to get along better and I'm the one that really has that state and local experience uh, to bring that necessary change. As a county commissioner, I have a front row seat on a lot of the issues that are facing our communities, whether it's the opioid epidemic, whether it's mental health, um, ex uh, program accessibility, chemical health program accessibility, um, you know, these issues that are facing our communities. I have the experience um, to lead and to bring um, change and results uh, in a bipartisan manner up at the Capitol. Great. And we'll stay with you, Ms. Bigham, for this next question on the bonding bill. Mm -hmm. This will be on the state's agenda for the 2018 session. Sure. If elected, what would be your top selections for state funded projects to be included in this bill? Well, I know that our uh, local communities uh, have put in projects. I know that there is stormwater um, and, and sewer uh, projects, uh, especially in South St. Paul. Uh, I know Hastings has some projects with the City Hall uh, renovation. Um, we, need to, we need to make sure that our um, infrastructure is solid. Uh, and uh, that we are investing in our uh, higher ed institutions, you know, and their, their um, buildings and opportunities. Um, you know, I think uh, bonding is an, is an opportunity to um, really make sure that we have um, uh, safe and, and secure uh, roads, bridges, um, and uh, other necessary improvements to make sure that um, our communities are strong. It's also a very good opportunity to provide jobs. Uh, I'm proud to have uh, a lot of the union uh, support. I have endorsed my candidacy um, because we need to um, make sure that we are uh, creating jobs as well. And I believe that uh, the bonding bill will make sure um, that we're investing in our economy. Great, thank you. Mr. McNamara. The bonding bill, this will be on the state's agenda for the 2018 session. If elected, what would be your top selections for state funded projects to be included in the bill? Well, thanks Tom for that question. I was uh, lucky enough, I attended the bonding tour when the House Bonding Committee chaired by my good friend, Dean Erdahl, who we came into the house together in 2002, visited Hastings specifically, and I got to talk to Dean about my top three priorities in the bonding bill. Number one is the Hero Center here in Cottage Grove. We need that to go forward. It's a really important thing for law enforcement and safety, and I, I strongly support that. That's the number one thing. Number two and three together, kind of similar priorities, would be both the Hastings City Hall, uh, which we're lucky to be in the historic Dakota County Courthouse of just a tremendous building that uh, is in dire need of uh, uh, mechanical HVAC uh, improvements. And I look forward to uh, that being included in the bonding bill. And then the South St. Paul Library. So three local projects that I intend to go and fight for and work with my friends on both sides uh, of the aisle as we need uh, supermajority votes to pass a bonding bill. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. McNamara, you get to start this next one on businesses. What would you tell business owners in this district to convince them to support your campaign? Why should they vote for you? G great question, Tom. Just uh, terrific. Uh, why would why would a small business owner want to vote for Denny McNamara or somebody that works at a small business? Because I've been there and done that. For 30 years, I 
owned a small business with my partner Gary Hoffman and we planted trees, cut trees down, grew trees for a living. Uh, real proud of being a job creator. I know what it's like to sign the front and the back of a check. Uh, very important. I understand the red tape we go through and the bureaucracy that we've created. We need to cut down on that bureaucracy and let them create the jobs that they do such a great job for. There's nothing cooler than being an entrepreneur and seeing the satisfaction in your employees, knowing how hard they're working and how proud of what they're doing. And I was always proud that Hoff and I were acknowledged a number of times for the awards of being just an award-winning landscape contractor and doing great work, providing a terrific pension for our employees so they could move on and retire with a good living. So, no, I, I like entrepreneurs and I was one and I'm really proud of my record. Thank you. And Ms. Bigham, your turn for this question. What would you tell business owners in this district to convince them to support your campaign? Why should they vote for you? Oh, thank you, Tom. Um, as a Washington County Commissioner, um, economic development for small businesses has been a top priority for me and for the board. Um, 85 to 87 percent of businesses in Washington County have fewer than 20 employees. And so we really have to help uh, Main Street businesses. And um, uh, really, as technology gets better, as we get more efficient in, in how we do business, we need to be reviewing regulations. Um, also, as I've um, been speaking to small business owners, um, covering health care and lowering health care costs for uh, small businesses is also a very big concern because they want to do the right thing and they want to provide for their employees, but uh, health care is, is very um, expensive, and so I want to work with them on that. Um, most importantly, support them on how we can do and, and, and shop local and make sure that um, you know, we're in investing in them and patronizing them, uh, that we can um, help them be successful, provide jobs uh, for our community and for our local economies. Thank you. And Ms. Bigham, you'll get to go first on this one regarding sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. It's a topic that has been in the news a lot, both locally and nationally. If elected, what would you do to stop sexual harassment at the Capitol and in the workplace? Sure. Well, this is a topic that is incumbent upon all of us to, um, uh, to, to uh, solve and resolve because we should have high expectations for our um, uh, elected officials. The, I, I've, I've never had ethics charges filed against me. I've never went through the process, so I don't know um, uh, the, the nuances of, of the process. But what I would say is we have to have a process that has due process, that is fair, that's transparent parent that um, allows for um, uh, the victims to feel safe in coming forward. Um, we also have to protect not only members, um, but our staff uh, and um, the public and the lobbyists that also are up there. Um, these, um, the task force that, um, the results that were just um, um, reported this week uh, is a good start, but it didn't include the legislature. We need to, as a legislature, make this a top priority, and I'm the one that's going to go up there and um, uh, create the, the change and be part of that future change in that culture. Thank you. Mr. McNamara, your turn on this one. Sexual harassment, it's a topic that has been in the news a lot, both locally and nationally. If elected, what would you do to stop sexual harassment at the Capitol and in the workplace? You know, Tom, it's a great question, and we need to accentuate that everywhere it shouldn't happen. Not only at the Capitol, but in all, all workplaces, and I, I'm a real strong believer in that we need to do the right thing and move forward. I think uh, the creation of the task force is very important, and we need to hear what they have to say, but I was glad to hear Majority Leader Gazelka say, we're not only going to wait for the task force, we're going to begin to move forward immediately. We need a safe environment where people can come forward when they don't feel they're treated correctly. And we need to make it easy. We should have one place for everybody to go, one phone number they can call, one email address to go to, one website to go to, so people know where they can turn it. Be, be speak to someone anonymously and not have these bad things happen. It's unfortunate where we are in the race today, but we're here because of an unfortunate situation, and I certainly want to correct it. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. McNamara, you'll be first for this next question on education. Minnesota students and graduates have some of the highest student debt levels in the nation, but our highly educated workforce is what businesses often cite as one of our most important assets. How will you help student debt carriers and make higher education more affordable? 
Well, you know, Tom, it, it's, it's sad where we are today. I went to college at a time a long time ago when I graduated from the University of Minnesota, the Carlson School of Business, when you didn't have the huge student debt that unfortunately kids are having today. We need our job providers to create great jobs for them so when they get out of college, they're making a great wage and can pay back any student debt they had. So first, I think we need to make sure that we're getting good jobs for these kids so that when they come out of college, they're making decent money. They should be able to have a program just like I had. That I, I graduated from college, I owed, nine, I owed $900, that was it. That's all I was able to make the most in the summertime to make ends meet. We need them to be able to pay little or no interest on those student loans. We need them to be forgivable when they go into job professions where we need. School teachers in science, science and math, we should get them and get their, their loans forgiven when they go into those special fields. Outstate family doctors should have their loans forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. And now for you, Ms. Bigham, I'll repeat the question here for everybody at home. Minnesota students and graduates have some of the highest student levels, debt levels in the nation, but our highly educated workforce is what businesses often cite as one of our most important assets. How will you help student debt carriers and make higher education more affordable? This is a, um, a big issue for uh, young families and young people coming into the workforce. Um, you know, back um, not so long ago, actually, um, the state used to pick up 60% um, of the tuition costs of state universities, and that's not, the, and, and then the um, student would pay 40, and now it's flipped. And so right there shows you um, that the state um, really uh, did not invest in the higher education system like they should have. Um, we need to um, invest more in the student grant program. Uh, and, and I think that um, helps a lot of working families. Um, you know, we, we have to increase that. We shouldn't be attacking the ability for students to deduct their interest from their loans. And um, you saw that in the d recent debate uh, over the uh, tax bill. Um, so we got to continue to allow that. And then I believe that we should be looking at public-private partnerships where, um, where it's a job training program, where tuition buy-down um, with some of our wonderful companies uh, here in Minnesota to be able to help offset some of those costs. Thank you. Ms. Begum, we're going to now talk about clean water. Awesome. I think it's safe to assume you're both aware of the contaminated water issue that has been made headlines in this district since 2004. We won't go into the history on what has occurred. Viewers can look it up if they wish. Um, but instead, we'll just ask this question. What is your assessment of the health risk of our district's groundwater at this point? And what, if anything, do you feel should be done further by the state to ensure it is safe to drink? This is a big concern. Um, when I was in the legislature, I sponsored legislation um, to establish health-based values for the PFC contamination in our water. And I also sponsored legislation for the biomonitoring program to help um, monitor uh, health effects for the PFCs in the water. Um, the, our residents deserve answers. And um, I uh, am glad that uh, Lori, Attorney General Lori Swanson is pursuing the lawsuit so that our taxpayers are not um, saddled with the bill um, to clean up this water, uh, the, the pollution in the water. Uh, it wasn't their fault and they shouldn't be um, saddled with the, the uh, bill for that. Um, also, I think we need to um, um, have citizens have a voice in, in how, um, you know, th this has impacted uh, them. The MPCA uh, Citizens Advisory Review Panel was um, something that was taken away um, during my opponent's tenure, um, and that was disappointing. Thank you. And for you, Mr. McNamara, I will repeat the question. Please bear with me. I think it's safe to assume you're both aware of the contaminated water issue that has made headlines in this district since 2004. And again, we won't go into the history on what has occurred. Viewers can look it up if they wish. But instead, we'll ask this question. What is your assessment of the health risk of our district's groundwater at this point? And what, if anything, do you feel should be done further by the state to ensure it is safe to drink? Well, th thanks, Tom. And thanks for the question. And it's a very important one and one that I'm proud of supporting the constituents in the district when we became aware of this problem. It was me that asked the hard questions of the 3M vice president when she testified in the committee that I served on my entire 14 years in the legislature. I asked the hard questions and got 3M on the record when I asked Vice President Catherine Reed, what if it cost a million dollars to make sure our constituents have clean water? Is 3M gonna pay if you're responsible for that? And she said yes. 
And I said, Mrs. Vice President, Miss Vice President, I'm going to repeat. If it costs a million dollars, is three I'm going to pay? And she said, yes. That's on the record since 2007. I also authored the monitoring bill to make sure that our air is safe around the facility. So I have a proven track record of holding them accountable, and I will continue to do that as our state senator. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McMurray, you get to start this next one on health care. What, if anything, do you feel the state could do differently to address the rising costs of health insurance and prescriptions? Well, Tom, um, in regards to prescriptions, I think I'll do that one first. I think it's a shame that we see these TV commercials over and over. Some of them are 60, some I timed one that was 90 seconds long talking about some special health problem that a small percentage of people have. Think of the millions of dollars that big pharmacy is spending for these commercials. It's wrong. We should not allow them. They should not be on the air. Think of the savings we could have. I think also we need to recognize we need more competition. We need more transparency. Today there's a vast array of costs to have a knee replaced. What, what is the best place to have it done? What's the record? How happy are the people that are having it done? What are the costs? We don't know that. What other things in life today do we spend money on and we have no idea what they actually cost and what the results are? If you go to buy groceries, you know what you're paying, you know how much you like them. We should have the same thing in healthcare today and I look forward to working on it. More transparency is what we need. Thank you. And Ms. Bigham, your turn on this one. What, if anything, do you feel the state could do differently to address the rising costs of health insurance and prescriptions? Well, one, I would start off by saying that we shouldn't be giving $900 million to uh, insurance companies with no uh, regard to and no promise of lowering premium costs. So that's the that's the first one. But we need um, affordable and accessible health care. Uh, we need more competition in the market and I believe um, that the Minnesota Care buy-in proposal uh, is a, a good start for that. And we should be able, uh, regarding pharmaceutical companies, um, the government should be able to, Medicare, Medicaid, be able to negotiate uh, with the pharmaceutical companies on the price of drugs. And I know that I really compliment Senator Amy Klobuchar on her efforts for that on a federal level, because I believe that um, transparency in that um, will lead to lower costs. Uh, you know, no family should go bankrupt uh, and have to have fundraisers to, to pay for their medical costs. Uh, that is, the, um, you know, whether it's, we also need to work on mental health accessibility and chemical health uh, programming accessibility too. Uh, and I look forward to working on that uh, in, in this upcoming session. Great, thank you. Ms. Bigham, we'll start with you on this one on the budget. If you had to narrow it down, what one item do you feel should have increased state funding? And on the flip side, what one item do you feel should have decreased funding? Well, I think um, education, funding for education is not kept up uh, with inflation and growth. And so I think that making sure that the state keeps up with those two factors is important because 90% of school districts have levy approved voter approved levies and um, th that's direct property tax increases and that's the result of the, the state not keeping up with the, um, the growth on, um, in, our, in our communities. Um, you know, I think when you look at where we shouldn't have spent money, um, I, a couple items in the, in the tax bill that I think uh, cost us money unnecessarily was repealing the surcharge on tobacco companies. Um, and giving away permanent property taxes to uh, corporations that aren't even headquartered here in Minnesota are two things that I would not have done. All right, thank you. Mr. McNamara, your turn on this one on the budget. If you had to narrow down, what item do you feel should have increased state funding? And then on the flip side, tell us what item do you feel should have decreased funding? Well, Tom, two come to mind in regards to increased funding. I think we need to continue to make schools our number one priority. I feel it's the number one responsibility of state government to properly fund our public schools. And I'm impressed with the good job that our school teachers and the special education folks do with that issue. I had a terrific experience with Ms. Hames, a special ed teacher in fourth grade at Tilden with my own son, Michael, 
and how she taught him how to read when he was struggling so much and today he's doing terrific and loves to read. So that's, that's a cool story. Also, I would say our nursing homes. We need more funding for our nursing homes. We need to take care of our, our seniors. In regards to uh, areas where we need to evaluate the budget, I think we need to be careful in our, uh, are there systems in our, in our giving and in our welfare reform that we could do? Are we doing the right thing? Are we prioritizing to get people back to work when they're able to work? So I think we should look at that realizing that we're a good state and we, a good state that takes care of those that need our help. Great, thank you. Next one, and we'll stay with you, Mr. McNamara, on this one. Your political principles. You're both endorsed by a political party, Mr. McNamara by the Republican Party and Ms. Bigham by the Democrat Party. Please explain how closely aligned you are with your party's principles and where, if anywhere, you disagree with your party. Well, Tom, thanks. Um, I'm not a party guy. Am I endorsed? Absolutely. But the reality is I have the high, highest bipartisan voting record of any Republican in my last term as a minority member. I've been appointed to more conference committees by Speaker Thiessen in that term than any Republican member. So actually, I'm proud of working in a bipartisan way. That's what I'm most proud of. But what I'll tell you is I'm an independent leader. I've never taken one penny of PAC lobbyists or special interest money, unlike my opponent who's taken tens of thousands of dollars from those special interests. I'm going to the Capitol to represent my constituents, just like I did in my seven successful campaigns. Never took a penny from any special interest group. I'm proud I've been endorsed by a number of groups, business, labor, environmental groups over the years. This election, I'm working on, and working on getting the constituents endorsement and winning this election. More than ever, this is an important election, and we need to have somebody who's going to go and work for their constituents, not special interest. Thank you. And Ms. Bigham, please bear with me as I repeat this. <laughs> Your political principles, you're both endorsed by a political party, uh, Mr. McNamara by the Republican Party, and Ms. Bigham, you by the Dem Democratic Party. Please explain how closely aligned you are with your party's principles and where, if anywhere, you disagree with your party. You know, I think as, as public servants and, and policymakers, our responsibility is to help strengthen our communities, to lift people up to achieve their goals, their dreams, their aspirations. Um, I don't know if that's a political party, but that's a personal goal of mine. Um, I happen to think that the um, DFL party is the one that really um, strives on those principles and values. Um, you know, I have a strong history of working across the aisle on nonpartisan issues um, and by, in a bipartisan um, manner on issues that are a little bit um, more tricky. It's about respecting each other. It's about agreeing on a value and attacking that with integrity, with respect and compassion. That's how I've always worked and, and have had great results of it. Um, you know, that's what's needed more in the Capitol. Um, and, you know, there are times where my opponent um, had the opportunity to work in a bipartisan manner, such as getting the money for the Hastings Bridge, where he chose his party over his community. All right, thank you. We are now at the point to provide your closing remarks. And Ms. Bigham, you'll go first. This is your final opportunity to convince voters watching to elect you to office. Why should they vote for you, and you may include any rebuttals you may have or add on to any other answers you had before. Um, you have a full two minutes, and the floor is yours. <laughs> thank you, Tom, and uh, thank you folks for joining us today. Um, uh, I hope to have earned your vote. Uh, we have a big election on Monday, February 12th, and um, you know my priorities are the same as they have been when I was a Cottage Grove City Council member, when I was a Minnesota State Representative for the area, and now most recently and currently as the Washington County Commissioner. Um, I believe in well-funded public schools. I'm a proud product of the public schools. I have a PhD, a Park High Diploma, and um, I believe in affordable, accessible health care. Uh, for individuals, for small businesses, whatever um, it may be, we need to make sure that we have affordable and accessible health care. Uh, I believe in a clean environment, safe communities, and thriving local economies. Um, I will and continue um, to fight 
for these priorities, these values for our communities as I have done in the past. I'm the one that has the state and the local experience that I have had as a front row seat as a county commissioner on issues such as the opioid epidemic, human trafficking, chemical dependency, mental health, um, access to programming, all of these issues that face our, our um, communities, I've had a front row seat on. I have the leadership to go work up at the Capitol in a bipartisan manner for results for our residents and for the state of Minnesota. So I humbly ask for your vote on Monday, um, February 12th. Please visit CarlaBigham.com for any additional information on where to vote uh, and additional information about me. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. McNamara, your turn. Please provide your closing remarks, your final opportunity to convince voters watching to elect you to office. Why should they vote for you? Well, thanks, Tom, and thanks to everybody from uh, South Washington County and Hastings Cable TV again for hosting this important event. I think it's important that folks realize uh, there's two different people up here. One that's got a history of working hard on behalf of their constituents. And I'm going to take most of my time to tell a story about me working for constituents, which I'm the proudest of. In my 14 years as a state representative, they knew what they got with Danny McNamara. If they called me and had trouble, no different than when Katie Hacken called me. And uh, actually, I came out to visit uh, where she worked. And her employer said, hey, Denny, will you talk to Katie? She's had trouble. I think, you know, she's had some damage at her house. Uh, sad thing is they've been living in their trailer home in the driveway for the last four months. And she came in and she started telling me her story and she started to cry. And she says, Denny, it's, it's hard to believe, but our house had water damage. The basement all caved in. Uh, our insurance company has offered us $20,000. It's mold infested. We can't live in it. It's not safe to be in. Uh, we've had contractors come out. They tell us it's going to cost over $100,000 just to fix the basement. I said, Katie, this doesn't make sense. How about if I come down? She said, well, you're not going to come down. We got a dirt basement. I said, Katie, I was a landscaper. I'm not afraid to go get dirty and come in and see what's going on. So I went down a few days later and they weren't home. I left them a note and said, hey, Katie, give me a call when you get a chance. She called me back a couple hours later and she said, I didn't really think you were going to come, Danny. Uh, I said, well, do you have a flashlight? I'm in the neighborhood. I'll swing down. She says, yeah, I got a flashlight. I got my work clothes on. I had been working in the yard, so I came down with her and her husband, Al. We climbed down in the basement. It was like, oh, my gosh, this house, it was, the basement was all caving in. It wasn't safe to be in there. So I said, you know what, Katie? I'll make a couple of calls. I made two calls. I uh, was on two conference calls. A couple days later, she called me up crying. She said, thank you, Denny. We got a check for $259,000 and $16,000 a relocation. Please vote Monday, February 12th, for Denny McNamara on McNamara Monday. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And thank you both for coming in and providing you. your time today. And that concludes this candidate forum for Minnesota Senate District 54's special election. For more information on polling locations, absentee voting, and then the like, you can find all of that online at the Minnesota Secretary of State's website at www.sos.state.mn.us. I also want to note, so I did forget to note at the beginning here, there is a third candidate in the race, and we did invite her, Emily Melingen of the Libertarian Party, um, but we heard no response from her. But I did feel like we should note that. We did invite her to this forum in case anybody was wondering. Um, and if you missed any of this forum and you want to see more, have no fear, it will replay on YouTube and on our channels at Hastings Community TV, Town Square TV, as well as South Washington County Communications, Telecommunications Commissions TV. Uh, check our websites for scheduled times. I want to thank all of our cable TV pals, by the way, for their efforts in putting this together. It was a big team effort. And again, I want to thank you both candidates, Ms. Bigham and Mr. McNamara, for your time in coming in. I'm sure the voters really appreciate it. And good luck to you both on your campaigns. Thanks, thank you. Viewers, thank you for joining us. We hope this helped you with your decision. Please do make a decision and go out and vote on February 12th. See you next time. <laughs>